Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. My name is Mr. Rivanjo, and I want to strongly welcome you to this video. In this video, we are going to be discussing uh, on trigonometric ratio. We are going to be helping ourselves understand the trigonometric ratio better. Uh, this video is going to be a a video that will help many uh, students to understand the trigonometric ratio. So I lighted uh, under this uh, topic is what and what we are going to be discussing on that trigonometric ratio, because uh, I want you to know that trigonometric ratio is both uh, for general mathematics student and for the mathematics students. Although there are some aspects of the trigonometric ratio we are not going to discuss in this video those aspects are meant for for the mathematics students so in the other video i'm going to make on trigonometric ratio in the uh, near future we are going to be discussing extensively on uh, those topics that are meant for for the mathematics students of course this topic is meant for both general mathematics students and uh, for the mathematics students so all the things we are going to highlight or discuss in this video are meant for both general mathematics students and uh, for the mathematics students so wherever we stop in this video we are going to continue from there in other video that will uh, encapsulate those things that are meant to uh, know by the for the mathematics students so like i said we are going to be telling you the reason why we need to know the geometric ratio that we are going to start uh, from then we are going to tell you the meaning of trigonometric ratio and we are going to tell you the basic trigonometric ratio that we have because i must tell you we have uh, the basic three trigonometric ratio and each of them has inverses and there is other three uh, hyperbolic uh, trigonometric ratio as well but we are not going to be discussing that in this video we are going to discuss the basic one in this video then we are going to be te uh, teaching us how we can apply trigonometric ratio to solve problems and then we are going to discuss also the trigonometric ratio of special angles also we are going to this uh, we are going to tell you how we can uh, apply trigonometric ratio of special angle to solve him to solve problems and other application of trigonometric ratio like uh, when the ladder leans on against the vertical wall and so on as well we're going to talk about that in this video and we are going to be solving past examination questions like yek neko and jam questions and uh, all that things i will be telling you in this video so this video is going to help you i trust trust me when i say it's going to help you in understanding the uh, trigonometric ratio even better than the way you you know it before but before we get this before we get started Please, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, there is no you are not helping us by not subscribing. And uh, the way you can help us or improve this uh, channel is by subscribing to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And also, don't keep the video for to yourself alone. Please share the video with students out there, your mates, students out there who need this uh, resource material, so that uh, they can be better uh mathematically so without wishing much of our time let's start the discussion on trigonometric ratio Like I said, we are going to be telling you uh, what uh, the reason why we need to know trigonometric ratio. There is a reason why we must understand trigonometric ratio. In the previous video that we made before this video, if you check my uh, the video on my channel, we have discussed uh, uh, Pythagoras theorem. 
and the Pythagoras theorem we discussed there we told you I told you the law uh, the reason for Pythagoras theorem and also why we need to know Pythagoras theorem in relation to uh, right angle triangles and I told you the reason for the, uh, Pythagoras theorem and the condition that war warrant us using uh, Pythagoras theorem and we also saw many many questions on that uh, in that video so please I will advise you if you truly want to understand uh, this trigonometric ratio you need to understand Pythagoras theorem first so that you will know how to use them interchangeably so please understand Pythagoras theorem by going back to that video I made on Pythagoras theorem and on that, sit down with it and understand Pythagoras theorem very well before you come to trigonometric ratio so if you understand Pythagoras theorem then let's continue the, the discussion on trigonometric ratio if you understand Pythagoras theorem you will agree with me that uh, look at this right angle triangle we, are, yeah, we have on the screen right now we are giving two sides and uh, the third side is not given so variably if you understand Pythagoras theorem you know that uh, we can apply Pythagoras theorem to find this side that is missing knowing fully well that the Pythagoras theorem deals with only the side of right angle triangle Pythagoras theorem only deals with the size of a right angle triangle that may cannot be as, as applied to any other triangle aside to aside aside a right angle triangle so and uh, we have to be given two sides looking for the third side so two sides have to be given before you can use Pythagoras theorem so technically if I want to find this third side I can use Pythagoras theorem to find that now let's look at the second the tri triangle we have on the screen right now look at this second triangle we can see that in this second triangle only one side is given and uh, this side we are looking for this side and we don't even know this side as well the question is can we apply Pythagoras theorem here I want you to understand that question. Can we apply Pythagoras theorem to find this side x? The answer is no. We can only use Pythagoras theorem when two sides is given, looking for the third side. So in this case, one side is given, we cannot apply Pythagoras theorem here. So that means there have to be another, another, uh, another way we can find this side, given one side of the right angle triangle. Apart from Pythagoras theorem, there should be another way, another principle that can help us to find the side of a right angle triangle when we are giving just one side and uh, we are giving an other's uh, uh, information regarding that uh, right angle triangle. So that is where trigonometric ratio comes in. But before we discuss trigonometric ratio, I want you to, I want you to know one thing as a student that uh, Pythagoras theorem and trigonometric ratio are only applicable to right angle triangle. Don't forget that we have other types of triangles like isosceles, like uh, equilateral and so on. But both Pythagoras theorem and trigonometric ratio are only applicable to right angle triangle. You should know you should know when to apply Pythagoras theorem. You should know when to apply trigonometric ratio. Onto this to find this side, I can find I can use the Pythagoras theorem. But onto this one, I cannot use Pythagor Pythagoras theorem here because you are only giving one side. I hope you are following me. Now that means if you cannot use Pythagoras theorem on this one, there has to be another way or another application to solving this type of triangle. To solving this right uh, this type of right angle triangle. So and that is where trigonometric ratio comes in. The question is what is trigonometric ratio what is what trigonometric ratio having known that uh, we can apply trigonometric ratio to solve right angle triangle then what is trigonometric ratio because the, m most of the time students tend, tend to say that uh, definition is not uh, really applicable to mathematics so they don't need to know uh, definition but i must tell you that uh, that is not the case definition itself help you to understand the basic concept of a particular topic so you must know them so in this case what is trigonometric ratio trigonometric ratio is the relationship between the sides and angles of right angle triangle i repeat trigonometric ratio is the relationship between the sides and angles 
of right angle triangles. Mm. That means the Gromer ratio has, is talking about the relationship that exists between the angles and sides of right angle triangle. So we can see from there that uh, Pythagoras theorem only deals with sides. If you look into my teaching on Pythagoras theorem, you will know that uh, it only deals with the three sides of a right angle triangle. It does not deal with uh, angles. But the trigonometric ratio deals with both sides and angles of right angle triangle. What are we trying to say in here? Look at this diagram we have on the screen right now. This is a right angle what, triangle. Why is it a right angle triangle? Because of this right angle that is there. So this right angle here make this triangle a right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, we can see that we have other, uh, other angles like this angle alpha and this angle theta. This angle alpha and angle theta, they are both acute angle because they are both less than 90 degrees. Because addition of this and this should give us 90 degrees since this one is already 90 degrees. So this plot, this should give us 90. Now, what we are saying is, what the grammar is talking about is that uh, this angle alpha and angle theta here, yeah, they have relationship with the three sides of this triangle. That is angle alpha has relationship with this side, this side and this side. Angle theta also has relations with this side, this side, and this side. And that is what trigonometric ratio is talking about. Are you following me? That trigonometric ratio is talking about the relationship that exists between the angles and the sides of a right angle or triangles. So these two angles here and these three sides have relationships. And that is what trigonometric ratio is talking about. So when I ask you, what is the relation between this angle alpha, this side, and this side? You know what I mean that I'm talking about what trigonometric ratio. When I ask you what's the relationship between this angle theta, this side, and this side, you should know that I'm talking about trigonometric ratio. When I ask you what's the relation between angle theta, this side, and this side of it, you should, tell me, you should know that I'm talking about trigonometric what ratio. So let's understand that the trigonometric ratio is talking about the relationship that exists between these these sides. And the angles of a right angle what triangle. I hope you understand that now. Good. If you understand that now, let's try to define this side of the right angle triangle. Let's try to define them. Because we need to know the side of a right angle triangle better. So let's try to define the sides of right angle triangles. Defining the side of a right angle triangles in relation to angles. So that means we need to know. If you want to really know the side of a right angle triangle, they, we need to know them based on the angles that is in the right angle triangle. For an instance, let's look at this triangle on the, board, on the screen right now. This side is called the hypotenuse side. This side is called the word the hypotenuse side. The question is, how can I identify the hypotenuse side? How can I identify the hypotenuse side? Because when you understand the side of a right angle triangle, then we'll be able to understand the trigonometric ratios better. This side is called the hypotenuse side. The question is why is it called hypotenuse side? Majority of the students will say that it's because it is the longest side. But I must tell you that that's wrong. This is wrong. If you say that it's because it's the longest side, I can change, I can manipulate you on that uh, notion. It is not because it is longest side, but it is the hypotenuse side because it is facing this right angle. So any side that is facing the right angle is the hypotenuse side. This is the right angle here. It is facing this side. So that means this side is the hypotenuse side. So if I change, if I remove this right angle here and I put it here, where will, where will, the, where will be the hypotenuse side now? It's no longer going to be here. It's going to be this side. Because this side will be facing, this side will be facing this angle. So if I remove this right angle here and I put it here, that means this side becomes what the hypotenuse side. If I remove the right angle here and I put it here, where will be the hypotenuse side now? This side will be the hypotenuse side. So any side that is facing the right angle is the hypotenuse side. So that is why this side is the hypotenuse side because it's facing this right angle. So don't always say that uh, the hypotenuse side is the longest side. No, that's not. That is wrong. Now we understand what is the hypotenuse side now. So we should be able to identify, or we should be able to identify the hypotenuse side of a right angle triangle. I hope we are clear with that. Let's go on. Now, now that we have 
please let's go back now uh, that we know understand the hypotenuse side sometimes when i'm teaching a student probably uh based on what they ha uh, understand from the um, junior secondary school when i ask them since this is the hypotenuse side where is the opposite where is the uh, adjacent they will say they will start giving me different side okay this is the opposite this is the adjacent or oh, this is the adjacent this is opposite but i must tell you right now that we look at this triangle there's nothing like opposite here there's nothing like adjacent yet now right now we only have hypotenuse being that uh, this side is facing the right angle that makes it hypotenuse side so there's nothing like opposite there's nothing like adjacent before we can have opposite that means we must have an, an angle here or another angle here because the opposite has to be opposite of something adjacent of something it has to be opposite of an angle then adjacent of an angle since there's no angle here there's no angle here there's nothing like opposite there's nothing like adjacent right now now let's go to this triangle now of course this side still remain the hypotenuse side right because it's face, facing this right angle here are we clear about that so this is the hypotenuse side now we are now having another angle here which is angle theta now this angle theta now we now have opposite side where is opposite opposite of angle uh theta that will be this side is that correct now this angle theta now have opposite side which is this side now where is the adjacent of angle theta that will be this side now this is the hypotenuse this is angle this is the side that is opposite angle theta that's why we call this side opposite then this side will be what adjacent so this side is adjacent of what angle theta so because we are having an angle here that's why we have opposite of the angle and adjacent of the angle so if there's no angle here there's nothing like opposite there's nothing like what adjacent i hope i'm clear with that let's look at another instance look at this triangle now this side remain the up hypotenuse why because it is facing this right angle now we did not mark this angle here so that means this angle does not have opposite does not have adjacent but rather we mark this angle here we call it beta <coughs> so that means this angle beta here will have an opposite who can tell me the where uh, can you tell me the opposite of angle beta that will be this side so angle beta uh, the opposite of angle beta now is now this side then where will be the adjacent of angle beta that will be this side the opposite uh, adjacent, adjacent of angle beta is this side the opposite is this side and this remain the word hypotenuse so what am i saying in essence anytime you are giving a right angle triangle trying to uh, work on a trigonometric ratio then you should be able to identify the hypotenuse side first identify the opposite of the angle given to you identify the adjacent of the angle given to you in this case this is the hypotenuse this is the opposite of the angle beta and this is the adjacent of what angle beta do we understand that good now if you understand what i've just explained now let's try this triangle on the board sorry on the screen right now now we have in a right angle triangle a right angle is given here angle gamma is given here and angle alpha is given here and the three sides are labeled side is called x this side is called y and this side is called z now we want us to try this what is the value of the hypotenuse side using what is used to label the side using the label of the side tell us what is the hypotenuse side for this triangle number two what is the value of the side opposite angle alpha what is the value of the side opposite this angle alpha i won't tell you so i want you to answer that what is the value of side adjacent angle alpha what is the name of the side or what is the value of the side adjacent this angle how far also what is the value of the side opposite angle gamma as well the side that is opposite this angle angle gamma what is the value of it what is the value of the side adjacent angle gamma as well sorry uh the side that is uh the value of the side that is adjacent this angle gamma so using the label of the side as well so if you understand what you have discussed so far then you should be able to answer these uh, five questions the five questions we have on the screen right now and you can drop the answers in the comment section of this video so that uh, i will relate to that now that uh, we understand the sides of a right angle triangle that will enable us to know 
trigonometric ratio very well. We have not been you have not discussed trigonometric ratio before. You have just discussed the sides of the right angle triangle in relation to the angles. One side is called the hypotenuse, which is the side facing the right angle. Then if you now include another angle in the right angle, then that angle will have an opposite. That angle also will have an adjacent. Now that we know the part of the side of a right angle triangle now, let's start the trigonometric ratio that we want to discuss. Don't forget I said that the trigonometric ratio is talking about the relationship that exists between the sides and the angles of a right angle watch triangle. Now, there are three basic trigonometric ratio that we have. And those three basic trigonometric ratio are going to be de uh, are derived from this so ka toa. This is so ka toa. So the this three this so ka toa will tell us the three basic trigonometric trigonometric ratio that uh, ratio that we have. So from the trigonometric from this so ka toa we can get the three basic trigonometric ratio that we have from the so we can get one from ka we can get another one from toa we can get another trigonometric what ratio we are going to be we are going to be defining the meaning of the so ka then toa are we there now so don't forget also that a trigonometric ratio deals with angles and the sides of a right angle or triangle and the way we can get those trigonometric ratio we are going to get it from so Toa. So, every student that wants to understand the trigonometric ratio must remember so ka toa, and you must be able to spell it very well like this. So, you spell S O H ka C A H toa T O A. So, you must know, you must be able to remember this so ka toa very well if you truly you want to understand the trigonometric ratio. Now that we know that, let's try to define each of these terms here so ka toa. Now look at this uh, diagram on the screen right now. This diagram. This diagram has uh, three sides: side R, side S, side T. And uh, this diagram also, uh, this triangle also have a uh, angle alpha and angle theta as well. Let's define so. So, as the first part of trigonometric ratio that we have, is spelled S O H. S stand for sine. O stand for opposite, A sign A H sign uh, stand for hypotenuse. It's from so we get sign opposite hypotenuse. Now let's try to understand this. What is S? What is sine? Is one of is the one of the trigonometric ratio that we have. Sine is the one of the trigonometric ratio that we have, and sine is gotten from so. So sine is the first trigonometric ratio. Uh, the first trigonometric ratio that we are going to discuss this, uh, this uh, on this video is sine, and it's, this sine is getting from is gotten from so s o h. The, what, 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 how do we interpret this? How do I get sine of an angle? How do I get sine because sine is a trigonometric ratio, and we get it from so. The question is, how do I get sine of an angle? Because this sine is related to angle. Sine is related to what? Angle. It does not relate with sine. With side rather. So sine is related with, with angle. So the question is, how do I get sine of theta? How do I get sine of alpha? I'm going to get sine of alpha. Sorry, sine of this theta here. By looking at the opposite of it. Which is, where is the opposite of theta? T over the hypotenuse of hypotenuse, which is what I R. So it means that sine of an angle, sine uh, sine of an sine of angle theta here will be opposite, which is T, because opposite of theta is what is T over hypotenuse, which is what R, because that we know that hypotenuse is the side facing the right angle here. So what are we saying in essence? This S stand, stand for sine, which is uh, the first trigonometric ratio we are going to discuss. So sine theta is opposite, which is T, over hypotenuse, which is R. So that means the relationship between angle theta here, this side, which is T, and this side, which is R, is sine. Because I told you in the first place that trigonometric ratio is talking about the relationship 
that is it between the angles and the side of the right angle triangle. So I'm saying now that uh, the relation between this angle theta, the opposite of it, and the hypotenuse is what? Is sine. So that means sine theta is equal to opposite of what? Hypotenuse. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that means sine theta here will give us, sine theta is going to give us T over R. So if I want to find the sine of an angle, I'll look, I'll look for the opposite of the, the angle and I'll over what? The hypotenuse of the triangle. If I'm looking for a sine of an angle, this sign you are seeing here is the short form of this sign here. Sign of angle theta is equal to the opposite of theta over hypotenuse of the triangle. So that will give us T over R. If I ask you what will be the sign of angle alpha? If I ask you now what will be the sign of angle alpha? Sign of an angle alpha is opposite of angle alpha over hypotenuse. Where is opposite of angle alpha? X. Where is hypotenuse? R. So that should give us sine alpha should give us a S over what? R. Do we understand the first trigonometry that we have here right now? The first trigonometry we are talking about here is a sine. And how do we get sine of an angle? That is opposite over what? Hypotenuse. So look at the opposite of the angle given to you over hypotenuse. So the relation between angle theta, the side facing it, which is opposite, over hypotenuse is what? Is sine. The relation between this angle alpha, the side facing it, and this hypotenuse side is what? Is sine as well. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Do we understand that? Let's define the next trigonometric ratio, which is uh, uh, car. And from car, we can get cos. Car is spelled C A H. C A H. The first C S is talking about the trigonometric ratio, which is cosine. So from car, we can get what? Cosine. The question is how do we get the cosine of an angle? Cosine of an angle. Cosine of an angle is, is gotten from adjacent of the angle over hypotenuse. Adjacent of the angle over what? Hypotenuse. Now the question is where is the adjacent of angle theta and where is the hypotenuse? Adjacent of angle theta is this side. And where is the hypotenuse? This side. So that means cos theta should be S over R. Am I, clear? Am I correct? Cos theta should be X over R. That is the cosine of angle theta is equal to the adjacent of angle theta over hypotenuse. That means the relationship between angle theta, this side and this side is what? Cosine. I will repeat again. The relation between angle theta, this side, and this side is what? Cosine. Because cos theta will give us adjacent over what? Hypotenuse, which is S over what? R. So cos theta is equal to S over what? R. Cos, the short form of cosine is cos. We, are, we can say COS. So it's the short form of cosine. So cos theta is going to be adjacent of theta over hypotenuse. So it means that the relation between this side, sorry, this angle, right? This side and this side is what? Cosine. Do we understand that? So what uh, what would be the cosine of angle alpha now? Do you, if you can tell me down and say it, uh, or you can write it down before I, I tell you, what would be the cos of angle alpha? That should be the adjacent of angle alpha over hypotenuse of angle alpha. Adjacent of angle alpha, where is adjacent of angle alpha? This is adjacent of angle alpha, and this is what the hypotenuse of angle, uh, the hypotenuse of the triangle. So that means cos alpha will give us T over R. Cos alpha will give us T over R, which is adjacent of angle alpha over the hypotenuse. Do we understand that clearly? So the second trigonometry we have discussed now is what? Cosine, which is cos. So the first one we discussed was a uh, sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over what hypotenuse. So if I should ask you what is the relation between this angle theta, this side and this side, that should be what cosine or cos. If I should ask you what is the relation between this angle alpha, this side and this side, that should be what cosine as well. Let's define the third uh, trigonometry that we have. The third one is is 
derived from TOA, T O A, and the third one is a tangent. The third trigonometric ratio, uh, ratio is a tangent. It's called what? Tangent, which stands for T here. And how do we get the tangent of an angle? That should be opposite of the angle over adjacent of the angle. The tangent of an angle is gotten from opposite over adjacent. The question is, what is the tangent of angle theta? That should be opposite of angle theta, which is T, over adjacent of angle theta, which is what? S. So, angle theta, the relation between, which relation between angle theta, this side and this side, is what? Tangent. The relation between angle theta here, this side, which is opposite of it, over the adjacent of it, which is, is what? Tangent. So, that means tan theta will give us t over x. Do we understand that very well? Tan theta, t a n, which is tan, is the short form of tangent. So tan theta, tan of this angle is equal to the opposite of it over what adjacent. So you must know this tora, what is represent. Tora means tangent opposite adjacent. So to find tangent of an angle, I will look for opposite of it over what adjacent of that angle. So that means the tangent of angle alpha will be opposite of angle alpha over adjacent of angle alpha, which is T. So tan alpha here will be what? S over what? T. Is that correct? Yes. Tan alpha, tan of an angle alpha is going to be S over what? Over T. Do we understand now? So we have been able to discuss all the three trigonometric ratios that we have. The basic three trigonometric ratios that we have. We have sine, we have cosine, we have tangent. And those trigonometric are derived from so katoa. S sine is, is gotten from so. Cosine is gotten from ka. Tangent is gotten from toa. To get sine, which is S here, to get it, I'll look for opposite of the angle over hypotenuse of the of, of the triangle. To get the sine of an angle, I'll look for opposite of it over hypotenuse. To get the cosine of an angle, I'll look for adjacent of the angle over the hypotenuse. To get the tangent of an angle, I'll look for opposite of the angle over adjacent of the angle. If you understand that now, let's look at this diagram on the board on the screen right now. We have a triangle, which is a, which is a right angle triangle, don't forget. And we have given the three sides to be A, B, and C. We have angle beta and angle theta. If I ask you what is sine of angle uh, uh, angle theta, what would that be? What would be? Uh, I want you to tell me the answer now, or say it to yourself. What would be sine of angle theta here? From to get sine, we need opposite of it over hypotenuse. So sine theta will be what? Opposite, which is C, over hypotenuse, which is what A. So that means sine theta will give us a C over A. Do you understand here? Now let's look for cos theta now. What will be cos theta? Cos is gotten from ka. Cos is adjacent of the angle over hypotenuse. So where is the adjacent of angle theta? This side is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So cos theta should give us a B over A. Do we understand that also? So let's look for the third one, which is tangent of angle theta. Tangent of angle theta is the opposite of angle theta over adjacent. Where is the opposite? This is opposite of angle theta, and this is the where is the adjacent? This is the adjacent of angle theta, so that should give us a C over B. So tan theta is equal to what C over B. So we have gotten the three trigonometric ratio for this angle theta. Let's get the trigonometric ratio for angle beta here now. So let's get the sine of angle beta. So can you tell me the sine of angle beta now? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that should give us a B over A. So sine beta, which is sine of this angle, should give us a B over A. Let's get the cos of angle beta. Cos of angle beta should be adjacent over hypotenuse. Where is the adjacent of angle beta? Is it this side or this side? No, it is this side. Adjacent, adjacent of angle beta is this side, which is C. And where is the hypotenuse, which is, is A. So we have uh, cos beta to give us C over A. So cos beta will give us C over A. Then the last one, which is tangent. Tangent of angle beta is what? Opposite of beta 
over a potent of over adjacent rather which is a uh, c so that will give us a b over c for tan beta so tan beta will give us a b over c so with this now i want to believe that uh, we understand the uh, the basic three trigonometric ratio that we got from this so katoa i must tell you, you must be able to remember this so katoa because it will enable you to know which of the trigonometric ratio you will need to, you will need to use or you will need to solve a particular question that is related to trigonometric ratio because you cannot use all of them at the same time it depends on the question given to you and the question given to you will tell you which one you are going to use out of the three do you understand that but uh, the first assignment you need to know is to be able to know all the sides of the triangle related to the angle given to you so when i know the side of the triangle then i should be able to i will be able to know the the good measure i'm going to use out of all the three are we there now so we know what is sine sine is opposite over hypotenuse what is cos adjacent over adjacent, uh, hypotenuse what is tangent opposite over what adjacent do we there now do we know that now good now if you understand what you have solved now very uh, recently on all the basic trigonometry that we have now you are given this triangle and the side is 2 3 and 5 and you are given angle x and angle y and this is the right angle here so you, for now you should be able to know the the hypotenuse side of this triangle you'll be able to know the opposite of angle x you should be able to know the hypotenuse uh, adjacent of angle x you should be able to know the opposite of angle y you should know adjacent of angle y as well then you should be able to find what is sine x for us so what will be sine x sine is so from so you should be able to get your sine of angle x what is cos s what is tan x what is sine y cos y and tan y and don't forget that x and y they are both angles so find the sine of angle x cos of angle x tan of angle x when sine of angle y cos of angle y and tan of angle y write their answer and you can leave the answer in the comment section of this video so that uh, i will answer you on that i hope you understand that very well so before we get, uh, continue solving questions using the trigonometry we have discussed so far uh if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please click on the subscribe button right now so that uh, whenever we post information on this channel you will be notified immediately and please share this video with students out there who need this resource material to understand the geometric ratio please do the sharing now share it with uh, learners out there now let's start using trigonometry ratio to solve questions now the application of trigonometry ratio find the value of uh, x in this diagram we are having a right angle triangle you are giving this angle here to be angle 38 degrees we have this side to be given as x you have this side to be given as five centimeter the question is i'm have, i'm giving a right angle triangle right so that means i should be only i should be thinking of two principles to solving this triangle triangle is either i use Pythagoras theorem or i use what trigonometric what ratio then i will now ask myself which one out of the two which one am i going to use can i use Pythagoras theorem to find this side given to, uh, i'm looking for yes or no no why because i can only use Pythagoras theorem when i have two sides given to me and in this case i'm giving what one side so i don't know i uh, that means we don't know two side given so we are not giving two sarada we are only giving one side so i cannot use pythagoras theorem here so the only theorem i can use now is what the geometric what ratio do we understand that now and the question is out of the three trigonometry we have talked about since which one can we apply to solve this question we have talked about sine we have talked about cosine we have talked about tangent which one is can we apply to solve this particular question on the screen right now the only way you can answer that question is by defining what is given to you from the diag uh, on the diagram we are giving this angle and then we are looking for the side that is facing the angle given to us and we are giving this side that uh, what is the name of this side to this angle this side is facing this angle that means this side is opposite of this angle and what is the name of this side to this angle if this side is hypotenuse because it's facing this right angle that means this side is hypotenuse and this side is opposite of this angle that means this side is what adjacent of this angle so the uh, we are giving we are looking for opposites 
giving either center of this angle. So look at the three trigonometry that we have so far. So Katoa, which one has opposite and half adjacent? That should be Toa. So Toa has opposite and it has what adjacent. So that means the relation between this angle 38 degrees, this side we are looking for which is opposite, and this side given to which is adjacent, it is what tangent. It is what tangent. So I'm going to I cannot use sine, I cannot use cosine, but I can use I'm going to use what tangent because the relation between this angle 38 degrees, this side facing it, and this side is what tangent. So I'm going to use tangent to solve this question. Do we understand that now? So tan 38 degrees is equal to opposite over uh, adjacent, which is what 5. So we will be having tan 38 is equal to x, which is this opposite over what uh, adjacent, which is what 5. So the only trigonometry we can use to solve this question here now, based on what you are looking for and based on what is given to us, is what Toa. And Toa is talking about what tangent. And how do we get tangent of an angle that's opposite over what adjacent, which is 5? So tan 38 is equal to what? X over 5. From there, we have to look for our hex. So what can we do from here? We can cross multiply. So we can make this one over 1. So X times 1 will give us X. Then 5 times tan 38 will give us 5 times 38 like this. So you can now carry your calculator and uh, <coughs> press 5 times tan 38 like this. That should give us a 3.906 centimeter to 3 decimal places. Of course, you can also approximate to the nearest whole number that should give us four centimeter. But to three decimal places, you have s to be 3.906 centimeter. And uh, if you are pressing this, make sure that your calculator is in degrees because your calculator can also be in radians. So make sure that uh, your calculator is in degrees by looking at the top of your calculator and make sure that you are seeing d at the top of the calculator d. So if you are seeing this because your angle is given to you is in degrees, so your calculator must be in degrees if you want to get the correct answer. So you have seen one. Uh, one application of a uh, trigonometry ratio. So we have been able to use trigonometry ratio to solve this particular word question using tangent. Now, let's see another question. Look at this diagram on the screen right now. You are giving this angle here as 50 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. You are looking for this side, giving this side as well. Can we use which principle? Can we use? Can we use Pythagoras theorem or trigonometric ratio? We cannot use Pythagoras theorem. Also, we cannot use it. But we can use trigonometric ratio because we are only giving one side as well. So we cannot use Pythagoras theorem, we can only use trigonometric ratio. So the question is which of the trigonometric ratio can we apply? Is it sine? Is it cosine? Is it tangent? Which one do we apply to solve this question? Is it sine? Is it cosine? Is it tangent? How do we know that? We are looking for this side of this triangle and this side, sorry, I've, I've showed it already. Okay. Let's try to identify it. This side is opposite this angle here, angle 50 degrees. So this side is opposite it. And then we are giving this side, which is what hypotenuse. Because this side is facing this right angle here. So it is hypotenuse. So we are giving we are looking looking for the opposite of the angle 50 degrees. And we are giving the hypotenuse. So out of the three trigonometry, which one has opposite and uh, which one and uh, have hypotenuse as well? The one that I have opposite and hypotenuse, that is so. So so as opposite and hypotenuse so that means the relation between these angles 50 degrees this side opposite it and this hypotenuse is sine so sine uh, is the relation between this angle 50 degrees this side facing it and the hypotenuse given to us so that means if i want to find this side given this angle and this side i'm going to use what sine sine is opposite over hypotenuse so that means we'll be having the solution is going to be sine 50 degrees, which is going to be opposite, which is A over hypotenuse, which is 12.5 centimeter. So sine 50 is equal to A over 12.5. Do we understand that? Then from there, how do we find our A? You can cross multiply as well. A will be equal to 12.5, which is this times sine 50. So also from your calculator, you can print sine 50. That will give us 0 0.6, 0 0.760. Then times 12.5 of you can just spray it straight like this 12.5 times sine 50 that should give us a 9.576 centimeter to three decimal places as well so 
A is a 9.576 centimeter. Let's see another question. Look at this diagram as well on the screen right now. We are giving this angle as 29 degrees. We are looking for this side, tag C. We are looking. We are giving this side, uh, which is called 10 centimeter. The question is, can we use Pythagoras theorem to find this side we are looking for? The answer is no. So if you cannot use Pythagoras theorem, then we can use what trigonometric what ratio. So if that is the case, which of the trigonometric ratio can we use? Is it sine? Is it cosine? Is it tangent? Which one do you think? So let's define what is given to us. We have this angle given to us. This side is what I put on because it's facing this right angle. And this side is what to this angle. This side is what adjacent of this angle, 29 degrees. So which of the trigonometric ratio has adjacent and also has hypotenuse? Is it so? Is it ka? Is it toa? Adjacent and hypotenuse. That is ka. So ka has adjacent and what hypotenuse? Adjacent and what hypotenuse? So that means the relation between this angle, 29 degrees. This adjacent side of it and hypotenuse is what cosine, which is cos. So that means I'm going to use cosine to solve this side, giving this angle 29 and this side because this angle 29 and this side and this side has a relationship, which is a cosine. So what do we do? The solution will be cos of this cos of this angle, which is cos 29, equals to adjacent, which is c, over hypotenuse, which is what 10. So from there also we can cross multiply. C will be equal to 10 times cos 29. So the reason why I did not put times here is that uh, 10 cos 29 also means 10 times cos 29. So if I put times here, if I don't put it, it's still the same thing. So I just want you to know that as well. So if you press calculator as well, that should give us 8.746 centimeter as the value of C. So we have you have seen how we can use uh, <coughs> the volumetric ratio to find some of the side of the right angle triangle as well let's see another question look at this diagram as well we are giving this angle 30 degrees we are giving this side 10 and we are looking for this side x so can we use Pythagoras theorem no because we are only giving one side then if you cannot use Pythagoras theorem then we can use trigonometric ratio which of the trigonometric ratio can we use is it sine is it cosine is it tangent this side is opposite this angle 30 degrees and this side is what adjacent so which of the trigonometric ratio has a opposite and it has adjacent that is tan so we are going to use tan 30 degrees equals to what Adja uh, opposite over what adjacent tan is gotten from toa toa is a tan opposite adjacent so tan 30 is going to be opposite over what adjacent so that should give us a and 30 equals to 10 over x. 10 that 30 is going to be 10 over what x, which is opposite over adjacent. From there, you can cross multiply as well. So s will multiply than 30. We have s than 30 equals what 10 times 1 here. That gives us 10. Our aim is to find x. What do you do? You divide both sides by tan 30. If I divide both sides by tan 30, you have x to be equal to 10 over tan 30. So in this case, s will be equal to if you press the calculator here, that gives us 17.32 meter. So, because why are we having a meter? Because we are giving this side a meter. So, this also should be in what? In meter as well. So, that means this side is going to be 17.32 meters as this value of this side as well. So, we understand that. Let's see another question also, still on the uh, application of trigonometric ratio. We are giving this angle as 60 degrees, giving this side as 16.5 meters, and this side as k. The question is, how can we find the value of k? So, all you need to do is to remember that uh, we cannot use Pythagoras theorem because we are only giving one side. So, but we can use trigonometric ratio to find this value of k. So, ask yourself, which of trigonometric ratio can I use? Is it sine? Is it cosine? Is it tangent? What is given to you? We are giving this angle 60 degrees. And this side is facing it, which is opposite. And this side is what? Hypotenuse. So out of the three trigonometric ratio, which one has opposite, which one has hypotenuse? That is sine. So sine. So that means we have a sine. Sine is gotten from so S O H. So is sine of angle 60 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 16.5 me, uh, meters over hypotenuse, which is k. So sine 60 is equal to 16.5 over k. 
from there you can cross multiply that give us a k sine 60 equals to 16.5 then we can now divide both sides by sine 60 to get our k so divide both sides by sine 60 that will give us k to be 16.5 over sine 60 press your calculator from here that will give us 19.05 meters as the value of our k all right let's see another question still on a trigonometric ratio now in this case if you look at all the questions you have been solving so far let's go back a little this one we have been looking for side giving angle but now we are now looking for angle now giving two sides giving what two sides now if you look at this diagram on the board we are looking for this angle x giving this side and this side question one, can we use Pythagoras theorem to find this angle x no we cannot use Pythagoras theorem because Pythagoras theorem does not deal with angles it only deal with sides so but if question asks us to find this third side now we cannot use Pythagoras theorem because we are giving two sides already but the question did not ask us to find this side the question asks us to find the angle x so that means you cannot use Pythagoras theorem rather we can only use trigonometric what ratio then how do we do that we are looking for this angle we are giving the side the opposite the angle which is this six centimeter and we are giving this side also what is the name of what is the name of this side in respect to this angle x that is adjacent so which of the trigonometric ratio has opposite and it is also have adjacent that is tan so that means the relation, the relation between angle x this side and this side is what tan so that means you have tan x is equals to 6 over what 9.6 do we understand that so tan s is going to be 6 over what 9.6 uh, 9 so tan s is going to be 6 over 9.6 then from there if you press calculator this divide by this give us a 0 0.625 don't forget we are looking for this x which is an angle so how do we find angle x here how do we find angle x is by dividing both sides by tan if i divide both sides by tan i'll be having x is equal to tan raised to power minus one of 0 0.25 what's the meaning of tan, tan raised to power minus one this one is tan inverse tan inverse normally i say you should divide both sides by uh by tan so if i if i divide both sides by tan i'll be having x here i divide this one by tan i'll be having 0 0.625 divided by tan and that, that can be written as one over tan times this and one over tan is same thing as if you remember your indices one over tan means tan raised to power minus one in bracket 0 0.625 so this one is talking about tan inverse inverse of tan of 0 0.25 and how do we get that if you carry your calculator from your calculator you will see uh wherever you see tan just press shift on your calculator before you now press your tan press shift then press tan that will give us tan inverse like this then now press 0 0.25 and press and equals to it give you an answer as 32 degrees so press shift tan that give us tan inverse 0 0.25 and that should give us 32 degrees so that means the value of this angle a is going to be 32 degrees look at this diagram also on the screen right now we are, we are looking for this angle y giving this side 15 centimeter and this side which is a uh, 10 centimeter so we cannot use Pythagoras theorem to find angle no we can only use trigonometric ratio to find angle so from there the question is which of the trigonometric ratio am i going to use to find this angle giving this side and this side so this side is is what to this angle is opposite this side is what this side is what i put on because of this right angle so that means what's the relation between this angle y this opposite of it and this hypotenuse that should be what sine so that is gotten from so which is sine so is opposite over what hypotenuse so sine is what we are going to use to find this angle y so sine of the angle y so sine y is going to be 10 over what 15 sine y is going to be what 10 over what 15 so 10 over 15 will give us 0 0.6 is a uh, it continues so it does not end then i aim to find y how do we find y by finding the tan uh, sine inverse of this 0 0.66 so y will be because of sine inverse of 0 0.66 and uh, that how do we get sine inverse press shift sign a uh, calculator that should give us a, a sign inverse shift sign will give us sign inverse then now press 0 0.66 like this 
and that should give us y to be equal to 41.8 degrees approximately so that means angle y is a uh, 41.8 if you want to approximate to the nearest degree that should give us 42 degrees as the value of angle y so also let's see another question we're looking for angle k here given this side and this side so which of the two numerations are we going to use because we cannot use Pythagoras theorem since we are looking for angle so ask yourself which of the trigonometric ratio can we can i use which of the trigonometric can we use we are giving this we are looking for this angle k given uh, this side which is adjacent of angle k and this side is a uh, opposite of uh, this, sorry, this side is hypotenuse so uh, adjacent over hypotenuse that should give us a cosine car car so that uh, for cosine so that relation between this angle k this side and this side is a uh, cosine so that means uh, cos k will be equal to adjacent which is 3.5 over hypotenuse that should give us 5.8 so if i divide this by d that gives us 0 0.6034 cos k is going to be 0 0.3 so to find k that means to divide both sides by cos and that should give us cos inverse here so cos inverse of 0 0.6034 so how do we get cos inverse? Press shift cos on your calculator. Shift cos will give us cos inverse. Then you press 0 0.6034. And that should give us 52.9 degrees as the value of our angle K here. Which if you approximate to the nearest degree, that should give us uh, 53 degrees. So, so far so good. You have been able to uh, apply our trigonometric ratio. Either to find the side that is missing in the right angle triangle. Or to find the angle in a right angle triangle so if you understand what you have done so far please try these two questions on your own by on this tri uh, tri triangle you are you are giving this side giving this angle 47 degrees you have to find side y and side x also from this triangle as well you are giving this side 47 and 1.5 you have to find angle theta from these two triangles so apply that what you have learned so far to solving this, uh, these two triangles and uh, uh, drop the, uh, the answer in the comment section of this video and I will relate to that also. Now let's continue from where we stop. From here now we are going to be talking about the trigonometric ratio of uh, special angles. Trigonometric ratio of uh, special angles. What are special angles? There are some angles in the uh, trigonometric ratio that we, have, we call special angles, and uh, there are uh, quite a number of them from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So, even up to 7 to, uh, and so on, like that, we, are, we have more than uh, that. But when it comes to trigonometric ratio like this, uh, we have some special angles that we need to know. The reason being that uh, some of the examinations uh, questions like uh, WAEG, objective question or theory, even NECO, and most especially jam questions. Students, uh, most especially jam questions now, you don't use calculator. You are not permitted to use calculator for the exam. So, most of the uh, trigonometric questions that will be given to you are going to be revolving around special angles. And as such, they expect you to know the special angle offhand, and uh, you also know their trigonometric ratio offhand as well. Because all the angles that we have been dealing with so far, some of them, majority of them are not special angles. So that's why we are to use our calculator to deal with them. But when it comes to special angle, they expect you to know the trigonometric ratio of special angle offhand. So if you are aspiring to write jam very soon probably you are in ss1 or ss2 or ss3 you are yet you want to write jam very soon in mathematics you want to write mathematics it is expedient or important it's compulsory that you know the trigonometric of special angle i'm going to be telling those special angle very soon and uh, the first special angle we are going to talk about now here are angle 30 degrees and angle 60 degrees this angle 30 degrees and 60 degrees are special angles and you are meant to know their trigonometric ratio so I'm, I'm supposed to know angle uh, sine 30 degrees, what's going to give us uh, uh, cos 30 degrees, what's going to give us tan 30 degrees, what's going to give us as well. I'm supposed to know uh, sine 60, cos 60, and tan 60 as well. They are values as well, offhand. 
and the only way you can know them often is by knowing the Gromerian ratio of this special angle. Let's discuss, discuss how we get the Gromerian ratio of 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Now look at this uh, diagram. Of course, we are not going to prove this for you. Or, or, or I'm going to explain how this one is generated so that uh, if you want to generate it on your, by yourself, you can do it. But the issue is not to know this. The issue is to be able to remember this diagram and uh, derive your trigonometry from it. Because from this diagram, you can de derive trigonometry of uh, angle 30 degrees and angle 60 degrees. Now look at this diagram. This diagram is an equilateral triangle. It's, it's an equilateral triangle because all the sides are equal. This is two. This is two. This side is also two side. It's also two. Now in equilateral triangle as well, all sides are equal. Two, two, two. All angles are also equal. Sixty degrees, sixty degrees, and everything else also was sixty degrees. So now if you now divide the equilateral triangle into two equal by introducing this line here that should give it will give us two right angle triangles this is now a right angle triangle another right angle triangle and this angle here was 60 degrees so if you divide in if this line divided into two that means you have 30 and 30 and this side was also two if you divide if this line divided that means you have from here to here to be one and from here to here it also be one as well so we are now having two right angle triangle this is a right angle triangle another right angle triangle and they are both equal this side has two this is two this is two this is one sorry this is two this is one this is two this is also one so how do we get this side to be sub three or square root of three uh, if you pick one or any of these these two triangles if i pick this one then we have this side to be two we have this side to be one we can apply pythagoras theorem to find this third side so if i pick this one as well i can use pythagoras theorem to find this side as well giving this side to be 2 and this side to be two, 1 as well. So if I use Pythagoras theorem, that will be the square of the hypotenuse side, which is this side, which should be 2 squared plus, uh, sorry, pardon me for that. The square of the hypotenuse side is equals to the square of this side plus the square of this side. So that will be 2 squared equals to the square of this side plus the square of this side. So that means you have 2 squared equals to the square of this side plus 1. So if I collect light time, I have the square of this side equals to 4 minus 1. That gives us 3. So to get this side, I have to find the square root of both sides. So this, so that means this, this side will be square root of what? 3 or so 3. So that means this side is so 3, 2, 1. 2, 1, so 3. Then we have angle 30 and angle uh, 30 here, yeah, 60, 60. So from this diagram, either this one or this one, we can get the measure of angle 30 or angle 60 degrees. So you may not need to remember the two, you can just remove one. If I remove this one, I have a 60, 30 year angle 60, I have 90. So this is 2, so 3, then 1. From here, I can get sine 30, cos 30, and tan 30. The question is, pick one, whether this triangle or this triangle, what is sine 30? Sine of this angle 30 degrees, what is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. So... The answer is going to be 1 over what? 1 over 2. So sine 30 is going to be what? 1 over 2. So the trigonometry of sine 30, because sine 30, uh, 30 is a special angle, sine 30 is going to be 1 over 2. So if you press your calculator, calculator is going to give you 0 0.5, which seems as 1 over 2. But not every time you are going to be using calculator, like in jam, you are not going to use calculator. So you are meant to know that sine 30 is 1 over 2. And sometimes the question will ask you to leave your answer in short form. That means you cannot use calculator at the same at that time. Your calculator is job, jobless. So don't use calculator at that time. So that means you need to fall back to the ratio of special angle. So sine 30, you are supposed to remember that sine 30 is equal to 1 over 2. What is cos 30? Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is angle 30. What is adjacent over angle 30? This adjacent is so 2, 3. This side is adjacent over angle 30 over hypotenuse which is 2 so we have so 3 over what over 2 to be cos 30 then what is tan 30 tan is opposite over adjacent opposite of ang angle 30 is uh, this side adjacent is a uh, so 3 so we have a 1 over so 3 so tan 30 is 1 over so 3 but if you understand so very well you know that uh, you cannot leave your a fraction you cannot leave a fraction and uh, the denominator is going to be in short form. No, you cannot live like that, like this. 
and if you don't understand so please look for one of the video i've made so far in on uh, i've explained uh sort very well in one of the video in my channel where i explained everything on sword and that will enable you to know what you are going to do here anytime you're having a fraction and the denominator is in sort form then you rationalize so so three will multiply up and down so if so three multiply one you have so three so three multiply so three that give us three so that means tan 30 is equal to so three over three so dear student you are meant to know this often sign 30 is one over two cos 30 is so three over two tan 30 is uh, so three over three so these are the this is the trigonometric shadow for tan uh, for angle 30 degrees let's talk about angle 60 degrees this is 60 degrees here what is sine 60 sine 60 will be opposite over hypotenuse that will give us so 3 over 2 sine 60 is going to be so 3 over 2 what is cos 60 cos is adjacent over hypotenuse that will give us a 1 over 2 cos of angle 60 is a adjacent over what hypotenuse 1 over 2 what is tan 60 as well tan is opposite over adjacent that will be so 3 over 1 opposite of angle 60 is this side over adjacent which is a uh, 1 so 3 over 1 that give us so 3 so this is the trigonometric ratio of uh, angle 60 degree being one of the uh, special angle that we have so dear student you are meant to know the, this offhand you are meant to know this offhand as well are we there let's talk about uh, another special angle that we have which is angle 45 degrees so another special angle that we have in trigonometric ratio is uh, angle 45 degrees and how do we get the trigonometric ratio of angle 45 degrees this that can be also be gotten from this tri triangle and this triangle is an associated triangle this is a right angle here this triangle is an associated triangle also is also a right angle triangle because this is a right angle so then if this angle is 45 degrees that means the other one also going to be 45 because this plus this should give us 90 degrees then if this associated triangle this side is one this side is one because two sides are meant to be equal as well in the associated triangle and that should give us that these two angles are base angle of the associated triangle if you understand the plane geometry very well on triangle then how do we get this third side you can use Pythagoras theorem to get this third side which is the hypotenuse side so that means the square of this side is going to be square of this plus the square of this the square of this is one square plus one square that give us one plus one that give us two then to find this other will be square root of uh, two so that means this side is going to be square root of two then with this now we can now get the trigonometric ratio of uh, angle 45 degrees so either i use this angle or i use this angle any one i use you're going to get the same answer so i can find sine 45 i can find cos 45 i can find tan 45 as well so you are meant to remember this diagram if you cannot remember the value of of each of the trigonometric ratio of angle 45 then what is sine 45 that should be opposite of hypotenuse that should give us 1 over so 2 so sine 45 should give us a 1 over so 2 and we should know that we cannot leave an answer like this we need to rationalize this by multiplying up and down by so 2 so the 1 times so 2 give us so 2 over so 2 times so, so 2 give us a 2 if you want to understand this please check my video on a sword you understand that better then cos 45 cos is adjacent over hypotenuse also that should give us 1 over so 2 that should also give us a 2 over 2 if you rationalize so that means sine 45 and cos 5 and cos 45 have the same result then what is tan 45 tan is opposite over adjacent that will be 1 over 1 that should give us 1 tan 45 is going to be 1 all this one if you press them if you press sine 45 in calculator it's going to give you decimal number if you press cos 45 it's going to be the decimal number tan 45 will give you 1 but if the question asks you to leave your answer in short form or you are doing jump or you are, or you are writing jump you cannot use calculator at that point in time so now we understand the angles uh, special uh, the trigonometric ratio of angle 30 trigonometric uh, of angle 60 and trigonometric of angle 45 degrees so let's use that to see uh, solve question or let's see familiar question that you could be asked on the trigonometric of a special angle now let's look at this example on the screen right now you can see that uh, we are having a diagram we have this uh, side given to us 12 centimeter we are giving angle 45 degree which is a special angle and we have uh, this side x and this side is y so 
you are to find the value of x and y now in this case we should know that uh, this angle is a for uh, angle 45 degrees is a special angle so we don't need calculator here to find this side and this side because this is special angle so angle 45 is a special angle so we need to remember the trigonometric of angle 45 and um, based on what we are looking for now let's find the value of uh, x force so that means we need to look for the relation between angle 45 this side which is opposite and this side which is hypotenuse so that means the relation between the angle 45 this side and this side is what if i may ask you so this side is opposite of angle 45 and this side is what hypotenuse which is what you are looking for so that should be what uh, so opposite of hypotenuse so that means you are going to use sign so that means you have a okay, you, are to, you are finding x and y and we have to leave the answer in short form so how do we do that the relation between the angle 45 this side and this side is what is sine so sine 45 is going to be opposite of what i put in which is a 12 over x so in this case if you press sine 45 in your calculator it's going to give you a decimal number but because i ask you to leave your answer in short form that means you need to fall back to the good measure of special angle so you now ask yourself what is a sine 45 if you look at what you have discussed so far, sine 45 is a sort 2 over 2. Sine 45 under the measure of special angle is a sort 2 over 2. So replace this one with this one here. So we have sort 2 over 2 equals to 12 over x. From there, you can cross multiply. 2 multiply 12, that gives us this. S multiply sort 2, that means you have S sort 2. From there, we can now, 2 times 12 will give us 24. Then we can now divide both sides by sort 2 to give us our x. So if I divide both sides by so 2, I'll be having uh, 24 divided by so 2 equals to x. And we know that we cannot leave an answer like this. We need to rationalize this one by multiplying up and down by so 2. So we have 24 times so 2 over so 2 times so 2. So 24 times so 2 give us a 24 so 2. So 2 times so 2 give us a 2. Then 2 can go in 24. That gives us 12 so 2 centimeter. So that means the answer of this the value of this side which is uh, is going to be 12 sort 2 centimeter because question asks us to leave our answer in sort in sort form so that means s is in what it's a uh, 12 sort 2 centimeters so you can see the usefulness of uh, knowing the trigonometric of special angle in this case because we know the value of sine 45 that help us to bring it here and simplify from there so now that we know the value of our s we can you have to find the value of y see to leave an answer in short form i know this side now and i know this side i can use Pythagoras theorem to find the value of side y but since you are dealing with trigonometric ratio we can see use another trigonometric ratio to find this side y as well instead of using Pythagoras theorem so i can use a uh, any trigonometric ratio now i can use any one so if i want to use this angle this side and this side i will use opposite of adjacent and that will give me i'm going to use tan but if I want to use this uh, angle, this side and this side, since I know x now to be 12 points, 12 cell 2, I can use this side and this side and this angle as well. That should be adjacent over hypotenuse. That should give us what? Cosine. So I, I can either use tan, which is opposite over adjacent with this angle, or I can use adjacent over what? Hypotenuse, which is cos with this angle. So anyone you, you are going to get the same answer. So in this case, what do we use? We use tan opposite over what? Adjacent, which is tan 45. Do you understand that now? So we use the uh, relation between this angle and this side and this side is uh, tan opposite over what? Adjacent. So tan 45 is going to be uh, opposite, which is 12 centimeter over adjacent, which is y. If I ask you, what is tan 45? In the trigonometric of special angle, tan 45 is what? 1. Tan 45 is what? 1. So that should give us 1 is equal to 12 over y. Our aim is to find y can cross multiply there. So y times 1 will give us y. Then 12 times 1 also give us 12. So y is going to be 12 centimeters. So that means this side is going to be 12 centimeters. Because this is a, a, a an isosceles triangle and it's also a right angle triangle. Because if this angle is 45, that means this angle is also 45 degrees. Because this angle is 90. So sum of angle in the triangle is 180 degrees. So if this side is 12, that means this side is also 12. Two sides are meant to be equal. So you can use that as well. I hope you understand that. Let's see another question quickly. 
look at this diagram on the screen right now also in this question we are having two right angle triangle this is a right angle triangle another right angle triangle and the angles given to us are both special angle this is angle 60 this is angle 45 they are both special angles so we have to find the value of x y and z x y and z and we have to leave our answer in sort form we are not to use calculator in this case so where do we start from do we start from this triangle or do we start from this triangle we are going to start from this triangle why because if you look at this right angle triangle here we are given this side and we are given this angle 60 degrees so one side is given so we can use that to find a other sides but if you look at this triangle as well we are given angle 45 degrees no side is given there's no there's no side that is given at all so we cannot start from here so if you start from here we can get this x if you now know x we can get y this y also belongs to this second triangle we cannot use that to find our z do we understand that good if you understand that now then how do we find from this triangle how do we find our x all you need to look for is to look for the relation between this angle 60 degrees given this side we are looking for and this side given to us so this side this angle is given to us 60 degrees this side is opposite of it and this side is adjacent of it so which of the trigonometric ratio has opposite and adjacent that should be tan so that should be what tan 60 should be equals to x over what 16 tan 60 is equal to x over 16 since 60 is a special angle so that means you should be able to find the trigonometric ratio of tan 60 tan 60 is same as what so 3 if you remember our trigonometric ratio that we explained earlier tan 60 is what so 3 so that means when you are look uh, when you are supposed to write out the trigonometric ratio of special angle and memorize them so that when you need them you remember you ret retrieve them tan 60 is same as so 3 equals to s over 16 from there you can cross multiply s will be equal to 16 times so 3 so that means the value of s this side is 16 so 3 are we there so let's find our y from there as well so to find our this side which is y which also belongs to this triangle as well so i can use Pythagoras theorem since i have this side now i have this side so i can use that to, i can use Pythagoras theorem to find the third side but we are not going to use that we are going to use our trigonometric ratio so which what can we use to find this side now from this triangle so we can use uh, the relation between this angle here this side and this side you are looking for that is a uh, adjacent over hypotenuse so this side is an hypotenuse to this triangle here so this side is adjacent to this angle 60 so adjacent over hypotenuse is what cosine so cos 60 is equal to 16 over y cos 60 cos 60 is same thing as up adjacent over what hypotenuse which is a uh, cos so cos 60 is going to be 16 over y and what is cos 60 cos 60 is 1 over 2 because 60 is a special angle cos 60 is 1 over 2 equals 16 over y then from there you can cross multiply y will multiply 1 that gives us y then 2 times 16 gives us a 32 so that means the value of y this side here is 32 so now that we know this side now we can now use that to find this third side which belongs to this triangle and in this triangle we have this angle here to be 45 degree which is also a special angle and this is also a right angle triangle because of this right angle here so and we have this angle now sorry we have this side now which is y which is 32 degree uh, 32 32 then from there we are looking for this side which is z and this side is what is the what is the name of this side this side is hypotenuse because of this right angle here it's an hypotenuse and this side is what to this angle 45 this side is opposite to this angle 45 degrees so the relation between this angle 45 this side we have which is 32 and this side we are looking for which is z that is opposite over hypotenuse so that should be sine that should be what sine so sine 45 is equal to y over what z so and sine 45 degrees which is a special angle is so 2 over 2 equals to y is a uh, y is 32 over z from there you can cross multiply z will multiply so 2 we have z so 2 equals to 2 times 32 which will give us 64 from there we are looking for z you can divide both sides by so 2 so z will be equal to 64 over so 2 then you cannot leave an answer like this as well you need to rationalize 
So by multiplying up and down by sort 2. So that means you have 64 sort 2 over 2. And 2 can go in 64. That gives us 32 sort 2. So that means the value of this side is uh, 32 sort 2. I hope you understand the application of a uh, single measure of special angle as well. Let's see if other question we can think of as well. Let's look at this diagram as well. We are giving this tri uh, triangle having this right angle triangle which is inner one and this big one as well is another right angle triangle so we are having two right angle triangle here this small one and this big one then we are, we are giving this angle which is 60 degrees we belong to this inner right angle triangle and uh, this 30 degree which belongs to the big right angle triangle so what are we to do we have to find from here to here which is a we have to find this side which is b Given this side which is 16 and we are given two special angles 60 degrees and 30 degrees where do we start from which one do we find first we need to find our a first so using this small triangle this small right angle triangle that is we are we are having here and uh, we have uh, we are looking for this side we have this side given to us which is 16 degree 16 centimeter rather. so how do we find this side the, re the issue is that you have to look for the relation between this angle 60 degrees, this side, and this side. What is this side to this angle 60 degrees? This is side is I put uh, this is side is adjacent, and this side is what 16 degrees. Uh, this 16 centimeter 16 is what? What side? What's the name of this side? That is hypotenuse because of this right angle here. So that means the relation between this angle 60 degrees, this side, and this side is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. That will be cos. Uh, we understand, do we understand that now? That should be cos. So that means cos 60 will give us a uh, uh, adjacent, which is a uh, a over a potential, which is 16. So what is cos 60? Cos 60 is that 1 over 2. And it's equals to a over 16. Cross multiply from there, that should give us a uh, 2a equals to 16. Divide both sides by 2, that should give us 8. So that means from year to year is what? 8. Do we understand that now? Good. Then we are looking for B now. How do we find B? Don't forget that this side B belongs to this B triangle. This triangle we are having here, this one is not a right angle triangle, so we cannot apply trigonometric ratios to it. Don't forget that trigonometric ratio is only applicable to a right angle triangle. So we have no business with this triangle here. So we are having two right angle triangles here, which is small one and the big one here. So look at this B triangle. This big triangle right angle triangle rather. This big right angle triangle. It has this side which is B. That's what you are looking for. And there's an angle in this in that triangle which is 30 degrees and a right angle also. Because if you remove this line here, if you remove this line here, then you'll be having a right angle triangle which is this big one. Do you understand that now? So we are looking for this side. We don't have this side given to us in that big right angle triangle. This side is not given. And we don't know this side as well. So how do we do that? How do we find this B? But from this small triangle, this right angle triangle, we can find this side. Since we know this side given to us, we can find this side. That when we not get that side, we cannot use it to find what we are looking for in this big triangle. Because this big triangle and this small triangle are sharing this side. They are sharing this side together. So we cannot use this small triangle to find this side we are looking for. And this side, I tag it X. I call it X. So we can find this side from this right, small right angle triangle by using this side and this side. So this side and this side, 16 centimeter, this 16 and this uh, angle 60 degrees. What's the relation between them? That's opposite over what hypotenuse. Opposite over what hypotenuse. So that will be sine. Sine 60 is same as uh, x, which is this side, over 16. So x over 16. Then to find our s, we can cross multiply. So we have s to be 16 times sine 60. And what is sine 60? Sine 60 is uh, sort 3 over 2. Sine 60 is sort 3 over 2. So from there, 2 can go in 16. That gives us 8. 8 sort 3. So that means uh, this side is 8 sort 3. Now that we know this side, now we can now use that to find our b. So using this b triangle now. This angle 30 degrees belongs to this big triangle. Then this what's the relation between this angle 30 degrees, this side and this side. 
that should be opposite over hypotenuse as well because this side is opposite or is, is the this side b so hypotenuse of the the big right angle triangle and this side is opposite of it so that may be having opposite over what hypotenuse that would be sine as well so we'll be having sine 30 is equal to this side which is x over b and the uh, sine 30 is a uh, 1 over 2 equals to x this side you have gotten is a uh, 8 so 3 8 so 3 over b we can cross multiply from there that should give us a uh, b times 1 give us b equals to 2 times 8 so 3 that should give us 16 so 3 as the value of uh, side b here let's see more questions still on a uh, trigonometry of special angle Let's look at this triangle as well. We are giving this triangle, this side, this triangle is a right angle triangle. Also, this one is also a right angle triangle because this angle is 90 degrees. That means this angle is also 90 degrees because angle on a straight line is 180. So, if this is a 90, that means this is also 90. So, that means this is a right angle triangle. This is another right angle triangle. So, we have to find the value of x, side x, and side y. How do we start? Do we start from this right angle triangle or this one? We cannot start from here because in this right angle triangle, we only give this angle 60 degrees. No side is given. We don't know this side. We don't know this side. We don't know this side. But if you look at this one, we are giving this side. From here to here, we are giving as 14 centimeter. We have this angle 45 degrees. So we can use that to find this side. Because this triangle and this one are sharing this side. So we can find this side. So when we now know this side, we can now use that to find our X and Y. Do we understand that? So what relation between this angle 45 degree, this side and this side we are looking for? That should be opposite of this angle over adjacent. That should be tan 45 now. Tan 45 will be upward, which is 14 over this side. So we have tan 45 equals to 14 over, I call this side A. I call this one A. So upward over A, that gives us a tan 45 is 14 over A. So, time 45 is 1. So, that should give us a 14 over A. 1 is equal to 14 over A. So, cos multiply, our A will be equal to 14. So, that means this side is 14 as well. This side is 14, cent uh, 14 centimeter. Then, now that we know this side, we can now use that to find our X. So, knowing that this side is A, uh, 14, we can now use this triangle, given that this angle is 60 degrees, we can now find our X. So what's, so, what's the relation between this angle, 60 degrees, this side, and uh, this side we are looking for? This side is uh, adjacent of this angle, 60 degrees, and this side is what I put in, because it's facing this right angle here. So, then, what is adjacent over I put in, that should be cos. So, cos 60 is equal to adjacent, which is A, that we got here, over I put in, which is X. So cos 60 same thing as a 1 over 2 equals to a that we got is a 14 over x cross multiply s times 1 will give us s 2 times 14 give us 28 centimeter so that means s is 28 centimeter which is this side so we are looking for our y now so we can use Pythagoras theorem since this side is 14 and this is 28 you can use Pythagoras theorem to find this side or better see you can see use Pythagoras uh, you can see use our trigonometric water ratio so from there we can use a, a trigonometric ratio this angle this side we are looking for and we already know this size to be 28 so this side is the uh, opposite of this angle 60 and this is hypotenuse so opposite of hypotenuse that is a sine so sine 60 same thing as a y over x so then sine 60 same thing as 3 over 2 equals to y we are looking for is equal over 28 which is x so cross multiply that should give us a 2y equals to 20 so 3 which is 20 times so 3 so you can divide both sides by 2 now so y will be equal to 20 so 3 over 2 and that should give us a 24 so 3 centimeter so that is a that on concerning that question we just solved now now if you understand the trigonometry of a special angle 30 degrees 60 degrees and 45 degrees then please try to lay your hands on these uh, two questions and uh, see uh, if you are able to uh, solve them and uh, you can drop the com uh, the result or the solution in the comment section of this video and uh, I will relate to that
and uh, before we continue from where we stop now if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please click on the subscribe button right now so that uh, you'll be notified whenever we post video on this channel also share this video with a uh, student out there who need this uh, resource material to uh, pass their examination so let's continue from there also now another thing i want you to know when it comes to trigonometry of special angle is that uh, sometimes you will be giving question on trigonometry of special angle without giving the diagram to use like uh, you are not giving any any triangle to use or and yet you are giving trigonometry of special angle to solve and uh, how do we approach those kind of question look at this question so we have to evaluate cos 60 degrees plus tan squared 30 degrees Cos this is cos is trigonometric ratio, tan is is trigonometric ratio. Angle sixty degrees is special angle, thirty degrees is special angle as well. That means you are meant to remember cos sixty degrees. You are meant to remember tan thirty degrees up and the trigonometric ratio now. So that is the reason why you must know the value of the trigonometric ratio of special angle up and in case of this kind of question and the one those one those one you have solved earlier. So I remember if you, if you remember cos 60 is 1 over 2 and 10 30 is so 3 over 3. So if you remember this now, then this question you, you can solve. Tans, uh, cos, so therefore you cannot go back cos 60 is empty as uh, 1 over 2 plus tan 30 is a uh, uh what am I seeing here? Okay, tan 30 is a uh, where am I sorry? Uh, cos 60 is 1 over 2 you can see here sorry I, i've jumped to this place cos 60 is 1 over 2 plus tan 30 is so 3 over 3 then this square here look at this one means tan square 30 let me pronounce that for you tan square 30 that means find tan 30 then square it that what it means find tan 30 find the value of tan 30 then square it so tan 30 is uh, so 3 over 3 then square it uh, squared so which means we have 1 over 2 plus tan uh, so 3 over 3 squared means so 3 times so 3 over 3 times 3 that, mean, that is so 3 over 3 in two places which is what you have here do you understand that so what is so 3 times so 3 that give us 3 if you understand so very well then 3 times 3 give us 9 from here you can find the LCM which is 18 2 in 18 is 9 9 times 1 is 9 plus 9 in 18 is 2 2 times 3 is 6 so 9 plus 6 give us uh, 15 over 18. 3 can go here, 3 can go here. That gives us 5 over 6. So then you evaluate cos 60 degrees plus tan squared 30 degrees. That gives us uh, 5 over 6. This is only possible if you remember cos 60 offhand and if you remember tan 60 offhand. Do you understand that? Let's see another question. We have to evaluate sine squared 60 degrees minus 1 over 1 sine 60 degrees. Knowing that uh, sine 60 is a special angle, and uh, 60 degrees also here is a special angle as well. So that means you need to remember the range of a special angle as well uh, before you can solve this question. Of course, if you're a further mathematics student, then this should know that there's a way you can reduce this question instead of going through this long method. But for this, uh, for the sake of this video, we are going to use this long method because this numerator is a special is a different of two squares this one should give us sine 60 plus uh, 1 into bracket sine 60 minus 1 so then from there i can the uh, factorize minus here then this one will cancel out so we have minus sine minus uh, 1 uh, plus sine 60 then from there i can simplify that but let's use uh, what we have here we record that the uh, sine 60 is so 3 over 2 so 3 is uh, sine, sorry, sine 60 is there, so 3 over 2. If you put that here, this one means sine 60 squared. Find sine 60 then squared it, that should give us a uh, so 3 over 2 squared minus 1 over 1 minus so 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 squared will give us a uh, 3 over 4 minus 1. From here you can find the LCM, LCM is 2, that should give us 2 minus so 3 over 2. From there, also you can also find the SM of this as well. That should give us a uh, 3 minus 4 over 4. This divided can be written as divided like this. And then 2 minus or 3 over 2. 
you can change this one to times that's this one go this one come down and then three minus one my three minus four give us minus one over four times two over two minus or three then from there minus two one times two give us a uh, sorry two year one two year one give us two so we have a uh, minus one times one give us minus one then we have two into two minus or three left then two we can open the bracket here that should give us minus one over four minus two so three then if you understand sort very well you know that uh, we can rationalize we are going to rationalize this this uh, fraction because of this denominator having sort and how do we rationalize the you have to find the conjugate of this sort that will be four plus two so three so we're going to use that to multiply up and down so that is what you're having here minus one over four minus two so three times 4 plus 2 so 3 which is the conjugate of this one o open or multiplying up and down then from there minus 1 multiply this so you have minus into bracket 4 plus 2 so 3 over this is a difference of 2 squares 4 squared uh, so you can read, read this one if you can use this to multiply this or you can use different of 2 square method so that we have 4 squared minus everything here squared as well so 4 squared minus open bracket 2 so 3 squared that means that mean you are using different of two squares to simplify that or you can use you can open the bracket one after the other this time this let's say 4 times 4 then 4 times 2 so 3 minus 2 so 3 times 4 minus 2 so 3 times 2 so 3 that will still give you what you are having here as well do we understand that so 4 square give us 16 then 2 so 3 square will give us 12 because 2 times 2 raised to the power 2 will give us 4 so 2 square will give us 3 then 3 times 4 will give us a 12 so that will give us a 16 minus 12 will give us 4 then from there also we can factorize 2 out of the numerator here 2 is common here bring out your 2 here what do you have bring out your 2 here you have a minus 2 into 2 plus so 3 so then 2 here can cancel 2 down then we have a minus open bracket 2 so 3 over 2 so if you simplify this knowing that knowing this image of special angle you'll be having this as your answer now if you understand what we just did now then you should be able to try this uh, question that say without using tables or calculator evaluate this the first one is one plus cos square 30 degrees over one minus sine square 45 degrees you should know sine cos 45 and you should know sine 45 as well put the values here and square it and you simplify from there also simplify tan square 60 knowing the value of tan 60 1 plus 1 over 2 cos 30 degree cos square 30 degrees you should know what cos 30 is and uh, plus 2 tan square 30 degrees you should know what tan 30 is as well put that here and simplify as well number three you have to show that sine square 45 degree plus cos square 45 degrees is equal to 1 if you know what sine 45 is and what cos 45 is put that here and put it here square it square it and simplify it. it should give you what one as well so also another aspect of the trigonometry that we need to know is that uh, sometimes you could give you could be given the predefined value of a trigonometric ratio then you have to use it to find other values of trigonometric ratio in this case you have to find if you, sorry if s is an acute angle this one is telling you that uh, you, are you are relating with a right angle triangle because uh, in a right angle triangle one angle is right angle the other remaining one are acute angle so that means they're talking about a right angle triangle here if s is an acute angle and tan s is 3 over 4 we have to evaluate cos s minus sin x over cos s plus sin x this is a wire question and this is a question that most exam sets they set question uh, from this kind of uh they give question from this uh, like this whether yx or jamb and so on giving they can give you tan x they can give you sin x they can give you cos s their value then you have to find other values also like this one now we are giving tan s to be 3 over 4 you have to find cos s minus sin x over cos s plus sin x how do we approach this we should know that uh, the only way you can approach this is by drawing your right angle triangle and uh, fix in what is given to you in the right angle triangle how oh. when i draw my right angle triangle look let's look at it when i draw a right angle triangle 
the angle given to me here is x the angle is x so i will put an my x here i can put it here i can put it here. anyone i want to put i can put it here so i put it here you are giving tan of this angle what is tan tan is opposite over adjacent tan is gotten from toa opposite over what adjacent so that means opposite of this angle s will be having three so which is three adjacent is really having what four which is four do you understand what i'm doing here so assuming you see we are giving a sign let's say you're having sign x here that means i'll be having i'll put my angle x so sign will be opposite which will be here over i put it on that means i four my four will be here but in this case you are giving tan right uh, draw the triangle then put the angle the angle given to you maybe theta maybe another value so put the angle there then tan is opposite over ad ad adjacent which is still over uh, four so put your opposite here put your adjacent here then you can now find the third side using pythagoras theorem so you cannot find third side using pythagoras theorem because when you know the third side you can find cos you cannot find sign because if you don't know this third side you cannot find your cos you cannot find your sign of the angle given to us here so find the third side using pythagoras theorem so using pythagoras theorem you know that the uh, the square of the hypotenuse side which is the y square is equal to the sum of the square of the many two sides that means you have three square plus four squared so y square is equal to nine plus sixteen that gives us twenty five then y will be square root of twenty five that gives us five that means this side is what five so when we now know the three side of the right angle triangle then we cannot find any other uh, value given to us so we can find cos here cos of angle x is a uh, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse so if you don't know this value of this hypotenuse, you cannot find cos. If you don't know this uh, value of y, you cannot find sine. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse as well. So that's why we need to power find this side before you can find any of this one. So let's go. So to now get uh, cos s now, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. That will give us a uh, 4 over 5. Minus sine is a uh, opposite of hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. Over cos is 4 over 5 plus sine is a uh, 3 over 5 from there you can simplify further by finding the lcm here that's give us 4 minus 3 over 5 find the lcm as well that give us 4 plus 3 over 5 then 4 minus 3 is a uh, 1 over 5 4 plus 3 is 7 over 5 so this division here is what you have changed to division here so this you can change to times by this one going up and down so 1 over 5 times 5 over 7 5 can take care of 5 that means you have 1 over 7 so if you simplify this you have 1 over 7 as your answer also the same question what you just saw now the same it can be written as this as well if cos 30 is 12 over 13 where 0 degrees where thet, uh, theta is lie between 0 degrees and 90 degrees so it's telling you that uh, the angle belongs to a right angle yeah sorry the angle belongs to a right angle triangle so that is it's also an acute angle as well so without what does this one mean that the angle is also belong an, to an acute angle so uh you see the same interpretation as what we just solved now you have to find one minus uh, one plus sine theta over one minus sine theta sine square theta rather so what you need to do is to also draw your triangle then in this case i'm putting my angle here so you can also put it here it does not matter so when i put my angle here cos is a uh, cos of an angle theta is a uh, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse so that means 12 will be adjacent hypotenuse will be what 13 so i can find this dot the third side using pythagoras theorem also if i put my angle here that means my cos is adjacent that means my 12 will be here my 13 will be here that means i'll be looking for this side i will tag this side as my y if i put my angle theta here now so if you use Pythagoras theorem to find angle y, we have the square of the hypotenuse side, which is 13 squared equals to sum of the square of the remaining two sides. That will be 12 squared plus y squared. This one gives us 169 equals to 144 plus y squared. Call it light times. Y squared equals to be 169 minus 144. That gives us 25. Then find y to be square root of 5. Uh, square root of 25. That gives us 5. So that means this side is also 5. Then when we know this side now, we can now find sine. Sine is a uh, opposite of the angle, which is this side over hypotenuse. So if you don't know this side, we will not be able to find sine. So now let's try and simplify. 
Therefore, 1 plus sine theta will be 1 plus sine is uh, opposite of hypotenuse. That will be what 5 over 13 over 1 minus the square of sine theta. Sine is a uh, 5 over 13, then all squared. Here you can find the LCM. That should be LCM is 13. Then you can make this 1 over 1 as well. So 1 in 13 will give us 13. 13 times 1 gives us 13 plus 13 in 13 gives us 1 times 5 gives us 5 over 1 minus square each of these you have 25 over 169 then you can now find the lcm here as well 13 plus 1 give us 8 18 rather over uh i think there's a an error here i think there's an error there's typographical error here so this should be 18 over 13 not uh, 5 there's an that's a typo from my hand. Eight, 13 plus 5 give us 18 over 5. So change that. Sorry, 18 over 13 rather, not 5. 18 over 13. Please help me uh, correct that for us. 18 over 13. Then find the LCM and that will give us 1 over 69. Yeah, sorry, LCM is 69 rather. Sorry. LCM is 1 over uh 1 over 1 over 1 over 169. That's the LCM. So 1 in 169 give us 169 times 1 that gives us 169 minus 169 169 that gives us 1 times 25 that gives us 25 so if you subtract this one from this one that should give us 144 over 169 so here you are having 18 over 13 divided by 144 over 169 from there you can cross multiply sorry you can uh, change this up and down this one will go this one will come down so you'll be having 18 over 13 times 169 over 144 so 13 can go in 169, that should give us a uh, 13. Then you'll be having 18 times 13 over 144. Then which you can now reduce. So this is correctly, this one is wrong, please correct that. So you're having 18 over 13 times 169 over 144. 13 can go in 169, that'll give us 13. So 18 times 13 divided by 144, that's what you're going to be having as your answer. I hope I'm clear now. So please, uh, correct this change this one this is incorrect so if you understand what you just did now you can try this to um, question as well you are giving sign s to be 12 over 13 you have to find 1 minus cos square x you are also giving sign s to be 3 over 5 you have to find sign s over cos s plus 1 over tan s plus 2 as well so other areas in which we can apply trigonometric ratio at what problems there are what problems and uh, the first one we want to talk about is uh, when a ladder leans against the vertical walls this i always remember the any when i was in secondary school anytime i, I i'm giving this question i always remember when the uh, ne, uh what's it called electric distribution companies uh, agents when they come around to cut our lights the way they rest their ladder on top of the wall or on top of the pole uh, on the pole before they now climb the pole to cut the lights in our side we call them nepa so so i always remember nepa anytime uh i'm giving questions like this because their ladders we always lean against the the electric pole before they now climb to cut the lights so so one of the application of the trigonometric ratio is that uh, a ladder leans against a vertical wall at an angle of 60 degrees to the wall if the foot of the ladder is five meter away from the wall how long is the ladder so this kind of question is a word problem but before you can solve it you need to try to sketch the diagram that represents this information and the diagram is going to be in form of a right angle triangle so let's look at it critically we have a vertical wall something is vertical that means a straight line vertical like this and a ladder leans against it that means a ladder rests against it and uh, when the ladder and the the top of the wall the top of the wall when they where they meet they said the angle there is 60 degrees a ladder leans against the vertical wall at an angle of 60 degrees that means the angle that is made with the ladder and the top of the wall is 60 degrees if the foot of the ladder is a uh, five meter away from the wall that means the distance between the foot of the ladder and the wall is five meter you have to find the how long is the ladder if you scare the diagram very well, you're going to get something like this look at it this is the diagram that represents this uh, information this is the vertical wall 
and this is the ladder that leans against the vertical wall and it make an angle of 60 degree where they meet so the foot of the ladder and the foot of the wall are five meter apart according to the question how long is the ladder so that means you are looking for the length of the ladder so if you interpret this question you're going to have this kind of diagram and why are we having the right angle here because the foot of the wall and the ground they are perpendicular the foot of the wall the foot of the wall and the ground they are perpendicular so that we have right angle here so which give us a right angle triangle so we are looking for the length of the ladder so what can what can come to your mind what should come to your mind is the trigonometric ratio because you cannot use Pythagoras theorem here since you are giving only one side so out of the three trigonometric ratio which one can you apply this is opposite of this angle 60 degrees and this side is hypotenuse so we are using what sign opposite over what hypotenuse so sine 60 is equal to 5 over what x sine 60 is equal to 5 over x so what sine 60 because 60 is a special angle so sine 60 is so 3 over 2 equals to 5 over x you cross multiply there you have a times so 3 that gives us x so 3 2 times 5 gives us 10 then from there if you divide both sides by so 3 that should give us a turn over so 3 which you cannot live like this you need to rationalize by um, multiplying up and down by so 3 then if I multiply this one by so 3 that you have 10 so 3 if I multiply this one by so 3 that gives us 3 in meter so that means the length of the ladder is 10 so 3 over 3 meters in uh, in sort form so this could be given to you in a jam question or objective question in Y or NECO so and the option could be in a sort form like this so some student if it is a if the answer is not in sort form you can use your calculator to find your sine 60 but if the answer is in sort form like this that means you need to use the integration ratio of special angle for sine 60. let's see another question on that as well a ladder is placed against a vertical mast at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal look at this question now the angle the ladder is placed against a vertical wall a mat vertical mast at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal that means the angle is not between the ladder and the wall again now he said to the horizontal that means the angle is between the ladder and the horizontal ground now so horizontal means a line like this so the angle is now between the ladder and the horizontal ground so then if the foot of the ladder is 2.5 meter away from the wall how high up the wall does the ladder reach so you are looking for the length of the wall now that what we are looking for if you interpret that very well that means you have something like this as well so this is the wall this is the ladder so we are told that uh, the ladder make angle 45 degree with the horizontal that means the angle is going to be here with the horizontal and uh, the foot of the ladder from the wall is 2.5 meter you have to find how high up the ladder reach how high up this ladder reach the wall so that we are looking for this side so you can see that we are giving angle 45 degrees you have this side as well if you interpret this that question correctly you have this diagram like that i can also my course uh it's not i can also draw my diagrams so that uh, this uh it's not it's going to be uh it's it, it will flip just like uh, the one that was, i can also have my diagram like this as well that means i'm looking for this side this angle is going to be 45 degrees and this side is 2.5 meters so we are looking for this side so so it's still the same thing as this one as well but the issue is that what are we going to use to find this side what are we going to use to find this side you can use we're going to use Pythagoras theorem which one opposite over adjacent that will be tan so we have a tan 45 equals to y over 2.5 so what's tan 45 that's one equals to y over 2.5 Cross multiply to find your y that will be y equals to 1 times 2.5 that gives us a 2.5 meter as the value of our y which is the how high the ladder is up the wall so if you understand those two questions as well please try this one question on the the application of a uh, when a ladder links against a vertical wall so other areas where we can apply trigonometric ratio is the uh, angle of elevation and depression we can also apply trigonometric ratio on angle of elevation and depression so we are not going to be discussing that in this video 
but that will be the next top next video you are going to make so uh after this video i'm going to be talking about angle of elevation and depressions please i want you to watch out for that video and the only way you can uh, you will know that is by subscribing to this channel so that uh, whenever we post that video you will be notified immediately so don't forget to share the video with a student out there who need the risk resource material very uh, well so that uh, to understand trigonometric ratio please comment on the video give it a thumb up share the video and as you do so may the good lord bless you i will see you in the next video Bye.